welcome back to Faith and Flower. This is Robin. In today's video, I have some homemaking inspiration for you, starting with a small home project that I've been planning for a while. This is our courtyard patio area, and it doesn't get a lot of use in the summertime because it's not covered and it gets really hot. This furniture came with our house, so it was left by the previous owners, and they never covered it, so there are a lot of stains on the cushions. After we moved in, we bought covers for it to protect the furniture and the cushions from the damaging effects of the sun and also the rain, and it stayed covered through most of the summertime because, like I said, we just don't use this area as much as our back patio. And I had a little surprise when I opened one of them and discovered that a squirrel, I think, had made a little home in there lately. There were some nuts and some stains that I wasn't too happy about, but that's one of the reasons why I need to get out here a little more often, uncover everything, and brush it off. <laughs> this area can also be very windy. We have wind most of the time, so that makes a little bit of a challenge too when it comes to cleaning this area. All of the leaves from our neighbor's yards tend to blow over into our courtyard and gather at our front door. So as you can see, that one particular cushion has some pretty nasty stains on it. So let's not even think about what that is. <laughs> the good news is that it was on the underside. It was upside down. So I got really lucky with that because the Velcro goes on the top because that helps secure that back cushion. So I did get lucky, <laughs> but my idea is to take all of these cushions and spray paint them with fabric spray paint. So I'm not sure how that's going to work at all. I read some reviews and seen a couple videos where people did that to their cushions and they really liked the results. So what I thought I would do is give it a little test and see what I think. I chose a medium gray cover because I thought it would cover up any stains that are on the cushions and I thought it would also look really nice. It's supposed to be UV resistant, has long lasting color, and it's supposed to retain a soft fabric feel. Because I was a little unsure of it, I decided to just go ahead and do the one cushion with the really bad stains on it and see what I thought before proceeding to all of the other cushions. So I gave it one good coat. <laughs> I tried to make it as even as possible and it was a little scary. <laughs> I would say it didn't look too good, but I knew that after just one coat, I really couldn't tell. So I decided to leave it for the 30 minutes that you were supposed to allow it to dry and come back and maybe give it another coat before passing any judgment. So I decided to tidy up our front courtyard while the paint was drying. climate here outside Austin, Texas is very dry most of the time. We've had a little bit more rain this summer than usual, but it's also quite windy. And so the dust collects in all of the corners outside. And every couple of months, I need to brush some of it away, especially here at our front door. Usually in the spring and in the fall, Patrick and I will come do all of the windows and we'll clean this area a little more thoroughly at that time. But it's amazing how much collects here just in a month or two's time. So keeping up with it makes that job a little bit easier.
had high hopes that a second coat was going to make a big difference. I was a little disappointed, however, and I showed it to Patrick. <laughs> we both agreed that the paint seemed to be revealing some imperfections that weren't obvious before, like a big water stain, I guess, that was running right down the middle of the cushion. Plus, it highlighted the worn areas. So we decided to just let it dry for 24 hours and sort of revisit it and make our decision then. While I had everything prepped for spray painting, I remembered another small project that I'd been meaning to do. So I bought this paper towel holder at Ikea a long time ago when we were first married. It was natural wood and I painted it black to go along with our previous kitchen. And now I really wanna paint it white because I want to reuse it here in our laundry room. And I think a nice coat of white paint would really brighten it up and would make it fit into this area a little bit better. super happy with the results. I think it looks great. It really looks bright and fresh and I love repurposing or reusing something that you already have and spray paint is so cheap and such an easy fix. kitchen, I decided to make some yogurt this week. I haven't made it for quite a while and I've showed you this before, but I thought I'd show you again for those that haven't seen it or just to give you a reminder because homemade yogurt is amazing and if you have an instant pot, it couldn't be easier. It just takes three ingredients. I'm using the ultra filtered pasteurized whole milk from Fairlife and I put the entire container in there, which is about a half gallon. And then I'm just using half a jar of sweetened condensed milk. This is just saved over from the last time I made it. I keep it in the refrigerator and it lasts quite a while. Then I whisk that together really good to make sure it's combined. And then I add my yogurt starter. And this is just some yogurt that I saved from my previous batch. And I learned that you can save it in the freezer and it works great. First time I tried it, I thought that I had ruined my starter because it had a different consistency, but once I combined everything together, it came out perfect, just like it always does. When making yogurt, I highly recommend a lid like this one. I've got one in my Amazon store, or you can use the lid that it comes with. Just make sure that you remove the silicone ring so that you don't impart any weird flavors from something that you cooked previously. Select the yogurt setting on your Instant Pot and I set mine for 18 hours because I like our yogurt to be on the tart side. You can do it anywhere from eight to 18. It's up to you and your own personal taste. And one thing you'll notice is that the Instant Pot counts up from zero instead of backwards like it does for all of the other modes. Something else that I like to do, which may not be necessary, is cover this little valve hole on the lid with a piece of masking tape. And the reason why I do that is because the Instant Pot is bringing the yogurt up to the perfect temperature to develop those cultures, and I don't want any heat escaping. Another baking project that I had going this week was making another batch of granola. And this is something that I do often. I've shared it with you guys before. And the recipe that I use is very loosely based on one that I found in this Jamie Oliver cookbook, which by the way, this is one of my favorite cookbooks. I don't really follow this recipe anymore because I found that there's almost nothing that you can do that's wrong. <laughs> so I pour in about roughly four cups of oats and I love that I can make it gluten-free just by using gluten-free oats. Gluten-free oats are just regular oats, but they are grown in dedicated fields and harvested and transported in dedicated vehicles to ensure that they're not cross-contaminated with other products that have gluten, such as wheat. So any type of oats work for this. And then I just gather up all of the other ingredients that I want to add to it from my pantry. And it's a great opportunity to use up some of the things that I need to rotate out of there. 
Today I'm using coconut, pumpkin seeds, almonds, I'm going to put the dried cranberries in at the end, and I've also got some pecans. Pour everything into the pan, add about a teaspoon of cinnamon, about a third a cup of olive oil, and a third a cup of maple syrup. Stir everything together and spread it on the bottom of a roasting pan, and then bake it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. During the baking time, I take it out of the oven and stir it about every 10 minutes just to make sure that it's toasting evenly. done, I add any dried fruit that I'd like to it. I often use blueberries. This time I'm using cranberries. Anything that you like will be amazing, but you don't want to cook those things in the oven, so make sure you add them at the end. To the yogurt. After the 18 hour incubation period is over, I put the entire container in the refrigerator for several hours until it's chilled. And as you can see, it's a nice thick consistency, but I like to give it a good whisk. This definitely makes it very creamy and velvety. And then I make sure that I take out a little bit in a jar because this is going to be my yogurt starter for the next batch that I make. That will go right into the freezer while it's fresh and I can keep it for months until I decide that I wanna make yogurt again. If you're making yogurt for the very first time, I highly recommend using a high quality yogurt starter. I've got one in my Amazon store and you'll find the link for that down in the description box. That will give you the best quality yogurt and it will ensure that you can continue to use the yogurt that you make as starter for your next batch. You can buy a plain, unsweetened Greek yogurt and use that as your starter. I have just found that the results are not quite as consistent. We have been enjoying this yogurt for breakfast this week as a parfait with a little bit of the peaches left over from the peach simple syrup that I made in my last video and of course topped with some granola and this combination is heavenly. Also this week, I posted this picture of my peace lily on Instagram that is suffering. You guys gave the best advice and basically there were two suggestions. Either it needs more water, so I did make sure that it was watered and I spritzed the leaves really well and it still didn't perk up. So I have a feeling that the majority of you are correct and that it just needs a bigger pot. 
So I bought some of these self-watering planters on Amazon. I'll put them in the home section of my Amazon store in case you're looking for some too. And I also bought some really good indoor potting mix. This makes sure that there aren't going to be any gnats or bugs or anything like that. And it also contains some fertilizer. And sure enough, when I took it out of the pot, it was quite root bound. So I think this is definitely gonna help. I was also given advice not to make the pot too much bigger than the one that it's currently in so I just went up about two inches in the size pot and there was plenty of room for potting soil and I set about making a mess and repotting my plant. I really wanted some self-watering planters because when we go on vacation, sometimes we're away about two weeks at a time, and this way I don't have to worry about watering my plants or getting a friend to come in and take care of that. I probably filled it a little higher than I should have, but as you can see, it absorbed that water right away, so it probably really needed it. And then I returned it to its favorite spot where it only gets direct sunlight for about 30 minutes in the late afternoon. Previously, it seemed to really love this location, so I'm not gonna change that right away. And the next day, I feel like it's looking a little bit better. I think time will tell, and I'll definitely keep you posted, but I really appreciate all the great advice that you guys gave me on Instagram. I can see that the wicking system is really working because the water level has gone down even more since the day before. So I think this is going to be a great solution for this plant, and I can't wait to see it bounce back. Back outside on the front courtyard patio, I decided not to spray paint the cushions. And I was really glad that I just did the underside of this one that was so stained. Sometimes I think just cleaning the area and refreshing everything can make a huge difference. And the camera doesn't even show the stains on the cushions. <laughs> so I can live with it. And we are going to enjoy this area once things start to cool down a little more in the fall. And at that time, I'll bring in some more plants and things like that to make it a little more homey and cozy. Even though this particular home project could be considered a fail because I didn't go through with my original plan, I'm glad that I gave it a try because now I know what I don't want to do. <laughs> In any case, I hope that you were able to get some homemaking and home project motivation and inspiration. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here or haven't already done so, be sure that you subscribe before leaving. It's absolutely free and easy. All you have to do is click on my picture. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today. I look forward to talking with you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.